Hi everybody, this is Dr. Lewitzo. Welcome to week three of ALEC 241, our mobile video class. As you can see, I am at home and I'm joined by two special guests today. I have my daughters, Allison, say hi, hi. and Claire, and our dog, Ralphie, is also joining us. It is snowing out there, everybody, and so I did not necessarily want to I uh, come to work today and drive up to campus, so I'm recording and doing some work from home. If you want to take a look real quick, you can see outside we have quite a bit of snow falling. I know that we still have campus classes today, so I hope you all are being careful out there. Uh, and so just to give you a little bit of an idea of what is happening this week in class, we're going to be sorting through those Nebraska corn board topics, the science literacy topics, all of that, and sort of finally nailing down who is going to work on which video for their final project. Also talk through Facebook Live plans and that assignment you just turned in about your Facebook Live. But for week three, here are the things you need to get done. Allison, why don't you let them know what they need to work on this week? Due by January 30th at midnight. What do they have due? Their final project? Interview, contest, and research. Online activity number one. What's our and research journal number one. So those are your deadlines by January 30th, your final project interview contact and research. There are some bullet points in there for you to answer about who you will be interviewing and what type of research you have done about them, as well as online activity one and final uh, or in reflection journal number one. Okay, so this week for the readings, you should be reading chapters 4 through 10, and here are the main points that I think you should be getting out of those. The author talks about brainstorming and how to really brainstorm your topic idea for your video, and that would be separating the hot from the cold, as he describes. So the hot would be just all of those ideas that stream of consciousness flow through your mind, and then the cold are sort of when you start to go, well, I can't do that because of X, or whatever the constraints might be. So just start thinking about how you're gonna brainstorm your topic as you're researching it this week, and what are some of the hot and cold pieces of your brainstorming. And then these are things eventually that you will start doing on the fly when you shoot your video out in the field. Read through his example. You'll start thinking, okay, I'm in the middle of this uh, barn with the livestock and the scientist or this cornfield with the cover crops and the scientist and what are the things that I need to make sure I capture? What are the things that might have some constraints around them that I'll have to come back and get later? So this idea of capturing the action when you're in the field. Know who your target audiences are is also a critical part of this reading. Uh, know your primary audience, your secondary audience, and your online activity this week is going to ask you to work through that. Who are our audiences with the corn board and with streaming science? Who can we primarily target and then secondarily target? What might be their demographics? Uh, and then what are the competing sources for their attention, time, and information being shared to them? These chapters also talk about knowing the essentials of your story. So who is the hero of your story for us? Who is the main character? Who's the main researcher and scientist that we want people to get to know through your video? What is the beginning of your story? What is your entry point? Where does it start? Does it start in the field? Does it start in the lab? Does it start in a classroom? Does it start in a home? Where do you want your story to pick up and begin with the scientists you'll be featuring? What is the middle of your video? What are the important details and facts? that go in the middle about the research that your scientist is doing? What are the key terms you'll need people to understand to be able to do, uh, to understand and explain that research? What are also some of the more emotional questions you'll need to weave into the beginning, middle, and end? And then at the end, where will you leave people when your video wraps up? Will you send them to a website for more information about streaming science and the corn board? Will you end it with an emotional story, a factual story? What will go in the beginning, middle, and end? So understanding the story essentials. Think of our hourglass framework for video storytelling. 
Also, these chapters talk about how to start thinking in shots. So when we walk through the world, our eyes scan and see things smoothly from place to place. But when we shoot video, we actually need to start thinking in wide shots, medium shots, close-up shots. And so you can't just move your camera all over or it's going to be shaky. It's going to make the audience nauseous. So how can you start thinking in shots? When you walk into a laboratory and you're going to shoot video with your scientist, you need a wide shot to set the scene. We need to understand what the laboratory looks like from a wide perspective. You need a medium shot of the hands, people, faces, two people talking to each other, types of equipment you're using. You need close-ups of the equipment they're using and their hands and the genes they're manipulating. So you will probably shoot uh, one location from multiple perspectives and angles to break it up into pieces. So read through that stuff in the chapter and then also understand that every frame of your video tells a story. So you're breaking it up into shots and you're sequencing it together. Know that you need to see what your subject is doing, show action and reaction. If their hands are doing something, show what their face is doing. If they're talking to someone, show the person they're talking to and then show how they're listening. Always follow the subject and the action in your story, in your frames, in your sequences. Then he has this really uh, sort of funny couple of pages about the Rubbermaid rule is what he calls it. So always keep your video short. Don't, you know, capture, I, my rule is capture a ton of footage. Anywhere you go, no matter where you're at with your subject, capture a ton of footage, but you're not going to actually be able to fit it all in that small Rubbermaid container like he describes, right? You're only going to be able to fit some of it in your actual two to three minute video. So definitely uh, always shoot more than you need. Now for chapters 11 and 13 that you should also read this week. They're getting a little antsy here sitting with me, but you're hanging in there, right? Yeah? Interesting? No, not interesting? Okay. Well, maybe they won't become video producers someday. We'll see. Allison, you want to be a teacher someday though, right? Yeah. Yeah? Is this good practice to see what it's like? Yes. Yes. How about you, Claire? What do you want to be someday? A baker. Claire wants to run a bakery. She really loves to go to Goldenrod Pastries, so maybe someday that'll work. She's always baking stuff in our kitchen lately, so that'll be pretty cool to see, huh? Okay, girls, hang in there. We're almost done. Okay, so in chapters 11 through 13, he talks about pitching your story. So you need to be able to explain your story very compactly to someone uh, who is going to view it, who wants to know more about it. You should be able to explain your story in two to three sentences. Uh, in the Tompkins book that I used to use for this class, he always says your story focus should be a subject, verb, and noun. So something as simple as researchers examine cover crops should be your story focus, or researchers protect soil. And also remember that hourglass uh, format that we talked about last week. You need to make sure that your story is going to have critical information at the top, sort of almost a plot twist or a twist in interesting information, and then back out to a conclusion at the end. The dog is coughing. Um, and then also know what genre your video is going to fit in. So even if you look at YouTube, when we submit these things to YouTube at the end of the semester, it's going to ask what category does your video fit within? A lot of times for streaming science, we say they're educational videos and that's the genre or the category we place them in or science or teaching or agriculture. So sort of know what genre and type of video you're producing is so that you'd be able to explain it to people efficiently and effectively. And then you know, really think about your story structure and how it all hangs together. How are you going to tell your story? Will it be chronological? Will your scientists start with the history of their project and how they got interested in it? Or will they start with what they're currently doing and then you backtrack and sort of go in a circular format? We'll talk about different structures a little bit more in class as we go, but definitely read shoot through these chapters and start to get a handle on how you're going to structure your content for your story. 
Okay, a couple of things that you need to know. We are going to get out the iPads this week after we work through who's doing what for their final projects, and then we're going to start playing around with them and learning how to conduct a video interview. But some things I really want you to remember as you start to go out and interview people, you have to be a good listener to be a good interviewer. If you're not listening, 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 just like it says here, then you're going to miss how to follow up with more interesting questions that they might they might say something you weren't anticipating and you need to be ready to follow up and ask a follow-up question or to ask for more detail. You need to let them feel comfortable speaking with you. Um, so always listen. And then you have time before the actual interview, before you hit record, you need to help the person feel comfortable speaking with you. So you kind of give them tips about where they should be looking, how they're allowed to, if they don't like what they say, they can repeat it again because you're going to be editing it. Explain to them how if you ask them a question, you need them to put a sentence back together in their answer. So if you say, what is your favorite color? They need to respond, my favorite color is blue because you don't want them to just go blue and be done with their answer. So take the time to get to know them a little bit while you're setting up the gear so that they can get familiar and comfortable for the actual interview portion of the taping. Okay, some other things for your interview. What does this say on the screen here, girls? Open-ended questions. Less is more simple questions. Keep it conversational. So what all of this means is you don't want to ask them questions that are only yes or no. Do you love your research? Yes. That's all they're going to be able to say. So you want to say more like, tell me why you love your research. Explain to me why this is so important, the work you're doing. So have open-ended questions. Less, The less questions, the better because then you just sort of have some bullet points and basic questions you know you want to work off of so that then you can dig into those follow-up questions and more of a richer conversation when interesting information comes out of your researcher and keep it conversational. They're going to have a lot of jargon they're going to want to use about their research, so don't be afraid to go back to them and say, I really don't understand what that term means, and I'm pretty sure the school groups watching it won't as well, so could you tell me a little bit more about what that term actually means? So make sure you keep this exchange with your researcher very conversational and basic in terminology. When you do interview someone, be aware of the setting. You don't want to interview someone who's doing a uh, crop science and cover crop researcher or cover crop researcher in a library. You want to interview them in the field or in the lab. So be aware, don't put them against a wall in their boring office. Actually have them in their lab or in their building hallway or out in the field where it's a really interesting background. Evoke their personalities, encourage them to uh, be excited about their work. Ask them questions that really sort of get them to light up and be respectful, professional, and grateful. So do not cut them off when they're speaking. Do not be rude to them and tell them they gave you a bad answer. Find ways to be very professional and also be very thankful for their time and what they're committing to your project. Okay, the other thing we're gonna talk about this week is solutions-based communication. I would like for your stories not to just focus on the problem of the issue. The problems that we're facing with the corn board are things regarding climate change, if we're gonna have enough food to feed the world, um, energy problems related to the environment. So I don't want you to only start talking you should not start your story with climate change is a problem. We're not going to have enough food to feed everyone. Your story actually needs to focus on, yes, that's a problem, but here are the solutions our researchers are working on. So I want you to start thinking about these questions. What are the questions say, Claire? The first one. And not the problem. This one right here. Oh, how can we be... Be... Solutions-based video producers. Allison, what is our second question? How can we tell the stories of these scientists in a way that promotes positive change? 
Yes. So those are questions I want you to keep in your head as you frame your interview questions, as you frame your engagement with your scientist. Don't just talk about the problems that we're facing in the corn industry. Start showing us the solutions that the corn board is funding these researchers to work on. All right. Thank you for hanging in there for this week three video recorded from home with my lovely daughters on this cold, snowy day. So thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for, for joining, joining us. us. And here are your deadlines again. Don't forget by the 30th at midnight, I want to hear from you about your who you're going to interview and the research you've already done on them, your online activity one and your reflection journal one. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great week. Stay warm and happy week three. Bye. Bye.